18-year-old mother whose two children have not been seen in four months is behind bars after being arrested in Hawaii. It's the story that has America baffled. friends, how are we doing today? Today we are quickly going to go over what I thought of the Dr. Phil episode. Before we get started, we need to realize that this episode was filmed two weeks ago. Since that time, a lot of verified information has come out. So the stories that were told on Dr. Phil have changed over the last two weeks. And some of the things that were said on Dr. Phil aren't exactly true to this day. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is Colby Ryan. There has been a lot of rumor and a lot of smack talking about Colby, and it has pissed me off the entire time. There have been accusations that Colby is involved with his mom, and he is assisting her in whatever the hell she's doing, and that has made my skin crawl the entire time. The fact that he doesn't come out every day on the media does not indicate that he is involved with what she's doing, and those rumors and accusations need to stop. His participation in Dr. Phil, I think he did a great job. The, he told his story. That's the way he knows it, and people need to learn to respect that. The day before Thanksgiving, two detectives knocked on my door, and they asked me, you know, do you know where Tylee is? Do you know where JJ is? And immediately it was panic. I called my mom and asked her why the detectives were looking for the kids. And she basically just said, I got it. You know, I'll take care of it. I love you, don't worry about it. That was the last time I spoke with my mom. Last time I saw my mom was August 30th. She said that they were moving away. She did not tell me where they were moving. I spoke with Tylee mostly over text. She would FaceTime with me and my new baby and I started just noticing little changes in her response time, number one. The way that she spoke, the way she didn't capitalize things and I'd call her and she would never answer. I just had this feeling like what is off? Like why can't you call me? So my wife found some information that they were in Rexburg and she was married to a guy I'd never heard of and that they were looking for the kids and that they abandoned their house. And that was the start of everything right there. We've had two deaths in three months. Everybody's passing away. My siblings on top of this are missing. My mom was missing until they found her in Hawaii. And it was just, everything was a question mark. And that's what's hard, because I, yeah, I'm in the inside, that's my family, but it's like a movie. It's like, it's not real life. My mom has always talked about the end of the world or the second coming. and and things of that nature. I read that she was gonna lead the second coming of Jesus and that she had all this stuff going on with angels and things like that. My fear is everything to do with the kids and now she's with someone who feeds that side of the world ending and that's their joint belief. It seems like they've cut all ties to everything. I want my mom to know that her actions have caused a complete devastation. I'm at everything that she's done. I'm mad that my entire family is a shattered base and it just seems like she doesn't care about anything now because the episode was filmed two weeks ago like i said in my opinion it was outdated you know there was nothing dr phil and his crew could have done about that annie cushing did go on and also tell her story the way she sees it just like we saw on dateline she talked about how lori used to be and how lori was you know quote unquote normal and she would hang out with the kids, be a good mom, be a good person, be a good friend. And she, again, talked about how things have quickly changed, especially over the last 18 months. I met Lori in 2002. She had just recently married my brother. We were fast friends. She really felt like a sister. And my kids absolutely loved her. She was Aunt Lolo. I never noticed any kind of red flags until our visit in 2018. One of the biggest concerns was she had this fixation on the end times. She went so far as to say that it's going to be so scary, sometimes she thinks it'd be better to just put her kids in the car and go over the side of a cliff. 
Lori changed significantly. In addition to the end time stuff, I saw a lack of empathy. When my brother died, she didn't tell me that he had passed. My family didn't find out until five weeks after she couldn't be bothered. He didn't have a funeral. He didn't even have an obituary. It was like he just slipped away without anyone noticing. Lori seems absolutely infatuated with her new and fifth husband, Chad Dayball. Chad is deep into the teachings of the afterlife. Learning about his teachings gave me context for some of the crazier things she said. The chances of Tylee and JJ being alive are extremely remote. Nothing that she's doing is in any way indicative of a parent who just has her children safely tucked away. Now, of course, we did see Kay and Larry Wood. They're leading the campaign to find these children. Without them, none of these things would have come to light. So again, they went on Dr. Phil, told their story. And my favorite part of the entire episode is when Larry Woodcock looked into the camera and had a message for Chad. Anything to say to Lori right now, but I have something to say to Chad. Chad, look in the TV, look in my eyes. Man up, son. It is time for you to have a talk with your wife and end this. Find those kids. My opinion is that really you can't get more badass than that. He said what he felt and he said what everybody else is thinking but in my opinion it's unfortunate that chad is the puppet master in this whole thing and he is not going to take any responsibility or encourage lori to do that either i love his message i just think it's going to fall in deaf ears which absolutely sucks now if you are new to this case i think that the episode broke down the basics of the case pretty well. In early January, I did make a, a basic timeline of this case. The link for that will be in the description box below. And then I also made a very detailed timeline of this case. It is two hours long. It breaks down all of the events of this crazy case. All that information will be down in the description box below. I really don't have a lot to say about it because for me, being so familiar with the case, it was outdated and somewhat boring. I hate to be that way to Dr. Phil. I mean, realistically, I'm not a Dr. Phil fan anyway, but I think that everybody that participated in the show did a great job telling their story the way they see it. It's their story. We are just observers of what's going on in their life. But overall, for me, it was kind of boring. But like I said, if you're new to this case, it really did break it down fairly well. My review was actually pretty short because I don't have a lot to say about it. It is popping up on YouTube and other places. I watch it on YouTube TV, so you guys can definitely find it fairly easy. Don't forget, we will be live tonight on this channel at 8 p.m. Central. Today is Friday, February 28th, 2020. I definitely invite you to join us. If you are new to this case or if you are very familiar with it, I definitely invite you to subscribe. I have a lot of content coming up. There are over two dozen videos about this case. My playlist is linked in the description box below. I definitely invite you to check that out. Ever this video finds you, I hope you're having the best day ever. Be safe out there. Make good choices. And I will see you guys tonight at 8 p.m. Central. Bye, guys.